Good morning and by morning I mean it is 2.45 in the morning because apparently this is the best time to leave Delhi to go to the Taj Mahal. <laughs> Every morning. Somehow I am surprisingly awake for the time of the day, but Miss Trace there is a little cranky. <laughs> Very good, thank you. This is super interesting. His car and apparently most of public transportation, they work on natural gas now. It's better for the environment and cheaper. Yeah. So we just stopped on the side of the highway for a little cup of chai and it is 4 a.m. This place is buzzing music. There's probably over a hundred people. Quite something. Just give me a 4 a.m. dance. How do you dance at 4 a.m.? Let me show you. <laughs> this is my 4 a.m. dance. <laughs> On the road. So we are almost there. We're currently walking towards the Taj, and fun fact cars are not allowed within one kilometer of it. And it's mainly because uh, they're trying to preserve the, the white marble on the Taj so to keep the pollution away. So, our tour guide for the Taj Mahal today is Kajendra. I'm not too bad. I'm, not I'm gonna bad. I'm gonna keep practicing. He's from Tour for Fun. All their information are gonna be uh, down below if you wanna visit the Taj Mahal because you cannot come to India without seeing the Taj, of course. And there's Tracy there. Tracy's gonna join us too. It's like a little electric uh, card that are coming, and you have to be super quick to jump on them because there's a lot of people. Oh, one is coming. Okay, so quick disclaimers, microphones are not allowed on cameras, so I will do my best to avoid the wind and any kind of like outside noise, uh, but yeah, that's the reality of it. We're just having our first view right now, just over the wall, looks fantastic. So the line that I'm standing on right now is actually the exact center point of everything. And if you kind of look from this line and look up, you can actually see the points of the arches. They all line up onto that line. So the Taj Mahal was built in the 1600s. It took 22 years to build and over 20,000 people. And some of those people were actually living all around here in the different quarters that you can see. Marble is Makrana marble. Makrana marble? It came from the Makrana, Rajasthan. Makrana and Rajasthan. Rajasthan. <laughs> So the marble on the calligraphy that you kind of see on the arch there, if you look at it, it looks like there'd be many different pieces, but it's actually only six massive pieces to do the entire arch. And it took over a thousand elephants to get the marble from Rajasthan. From Rajasthan. <laughs> Good thing he's here to fact check us. We're starting to get our first look at the Taj through the arches here. seeing the Taj right now with the sunlight slowly showing on it. It's stunning. We did a little photo shoot in front of the Taj and when I dipped Tracy over, everyone was like, ah. Oh. <laughs> We're so cute. Oh, 
Yeah, I have to admit, for the longest time in my life, I thought that the Taj Mahal was some sort of like palace for an emperor or something like that. But it's, in fact, it's a tomb. It was built after the death of the third wife of the Mughal emperor because it was his favorite wife, just like Tracy is my favorite wife. <laughs> okay, my only wife. one. <laughs> on the west side of the Taj, you actually have a mosque, and that is actually used on Fridays, which is why on Fridays you can't access the Taj. But just for symmetry, they built the exact same thing on the other side of the Taj. Not used for anything. Just to make it look good. Monkeys are no jokes here. There's like sign above them <laughs> everywhere. <laughs> Don't make direct eye contact. They go in the main mausoleum and they put shoe covers on. No going inside. So since we couldn't film inside, here's our best attempt at describing it. So once you go in, there's two tombs and it's funny because the only thing that's not symmetrical in this entire compound are the two tombs. It's One in the middle. Yeah, which is hers. Which is hers and him on the left side. Because he wasn't planned to be buried there basically. Exactly. So he was a bit of an afterthought in there. Yeah making it not symmetrical. Yeah. But Anyways. Otherwise, inside, high ceiling, beautiful yeah. marble carving everywhere, yeah. and the colors. Yeah, so it's really cool. If you look closely at all of like, the flowers and everything, there's actually, it's not paintings, it's gemstones. There's, there's an amount of 25 different gemstones just in the flowers like all around which is really cool and it's both like inside and outside the yeah. Taj so like the amount of work that went into this building and insane all done by hand yeah so let's remember that <laughs> that's even more impressive and when Tracy said that uh, basically it was an afterthought of him being buried there with his wife it's because at first he was supposed to be buried just across the river there's the foundation there, but this was never finished, but it was supposed to build a black Taj for him after his death, but it didn't happen. Talking about symmetry, of course, the Taj is identical from every single side. And the pillars on the four corners, if you actually look at them, they're slightly leaning on the outside, meaning that if something would happen to them, they would fall uh, away from the Taj to protect the main building. So the architect, smart guy. So if you're a big Disney fan like I am, you know that the castle, when they build them in the parks around the world, they have big stones at the bottom and small stones at the top, and it's a forced perspective, making the castle look much bigger than it actually is. But here at the Taj, around the arches, the writing in black is actually kind of the opposite. It is small at the bottom and big at the top, so basically it makes it look all equal all around. It's pretty cool. So on top of the Taj, there's a pinnacle there, and back in the days, it used to be solid gold. This thing must have been worth a fortune. But during the colonization, the Brits actually took it away, and it was replaced later on by the current one, which is not solid gold. I don't know if you guys were able to see, but on the roof there, there's a man standing, actually two of them, and they have like probably, I would say, 40 to 50 pigeons, and it's called pigeon flying, and apparently it's very popular here in India. Back in the days, they were using those pigeons to like bring messages and you do the mail, but now there's no purpose to, to them anymore, but they still do it out of passion, and it's fascinating. All the pigeons go up, he makes some sign with, the, with his hand, they just go around and around and then they come back when he calls them back. Huh. So we are not done yet, not even close, but this is it for the Taj Mahal. We are at two wonder of the world. Ow. The first one was the Coliseum because I see you're like kind of wondering in your face. The first one was the Coliseum. <laughs> oh, and now that I've seen the Taj Mahal, I can officially confirm that I stand by the statement that I made when we first started this video. You cannot come to India without checking it out. It's Fantastic, beautiful.
Lucky I really wanted Tracy to buy a snowboard. <laughs> Let's go for breakfast. What is she having? Puri. Puri bhaji. Okay. Puri is the bread and the bhaji is the potato curry with the green peas. What's the name of this one? That's the paratha. The coated cheese paratha, the paneer paratha with the pickles that you can try. Well, that was a very nice breakfast and just in case you want the name of the restaurant, I would love to tell you it is Pekka Desi Sharab Ki Dukan. You're welcome. He's like, huh? <laughs> <laughs> it's, it, that's what, how, how would you say it? What? The name of the restaurant. No, that's it's not. Maya. Oh, it's just Maya? Yeah. <laughs> just Maya. Never mind. And this is why you should never trust Google Map. So all the artisan that made the sculpture and work uh, at the Taj Mahal back in the day, well, six, seven, eight generations later, their descendants are still practicing the art and we're gonna go check it out. So basically how they do it is they take the stone and they have like a little sander or grinder and they hold it just like this, little tiny pieces, and they grind it down to the shape that they need. And then with the marble, they take henna and it stains the top of it. So then they can etch into the marble the outline of whatever they're carving from there they can start basically digging it out i think he said three millimeters deep and then they lay with the glue they lay the design over top and then on top of that they sand it all down and it, the henna paint gets removed and from there you have your design and also you guys know every time we go to a new country we buy shot glasses and that's what we did but these ones are in real marble and they, they were made by the descendants of the artists that helped making the Taj Mahal, so that's pretty cool. They're also officially our most expensive ones in our collection. <laughs> so we just stopped at Panchapeda and we actually got some of the sweets that are, I think they're specific to uh, Agra. So we're gonna try them out. Are those supposed to be like a one biter? Or? No, 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 no. <laughs> no, 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 don't do that. <laughs> okay. Mmm. Mm. That's really good. It used to be not like with the many flavors. Mm -hmm. It's simple like pumpkin, made yeah. out of the pumpkin and sugar, the boiled pumpkin. After that, by the time for the innovation, they start making the different, different one. Now these days, if you go around the India anywhere, and if you talk about like peta, so there is a word come with it, Agra ka peta. Because this originally started from here. So pit stop to fuel up and uh, while they're doing that we're on the hunt for energy drink because uh, we've been up since 2.15 in the morning. Yeah. We're not going to make it. Got it. Tracy, so how are we going to get a monster sponsorship if once in a while you get a Red Bull? That's true. <clears throat> thank you so much. Okay, thank Have you. Have a great day. Have a nice journey, you two guys. Yeah. So to keep exploring today, we have a pretty sweet ride. A tuk-tuk. I mean, did you think that Red Jaguar? No, 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 no. That's not for us. We were wondering if they would let us uh, come in with the microphone and like the, the little tripod we have on the camera but I guess so because everyone is selling selfie stick in front of the temple. So tripod and selfie stick yes, microphone no. So welcome back on the GoPro. By the way we are at the Lotus Temple. The Lotus Temple is for the Baha'i religion. It's a Baha'i house of worship. It's a very small religion but present all around the world with only 5 to 8 million people. That's all I know about it. Thank you, Wikipedia. One thing I have to say, it's kind of frustrating, is that there's never a concept of a lineup here. You get past, we just get passed by like probably 40 people in the line. Just cause. So we weren't able to film uh, inside because it's a place of worship, but basically like there's nothing special inside to be honest, apart from like very high ceiling and a ton of uh, wooden benches. Uh, but it's very nice and like they, they let people from any religion to come here and pray. And they even invited us to, to stay for their service. So it's very nice. Yeah. Comments? No, the structure is like impressive. I'm not gonna lie. And it's yeah. also like not old, like it was a uh, Finnish uh, building in 1986, so oh, it's also. fairly new. 
So while I'm in India, there's one thing I really wanted to try and it's pan. Pan is basically a digestive that is used by Indian people after meals and it's basically like a fresh leaf with spices, with dry fruit that they close up, put in their mouth and chew. But at the shop behind me, they actually light it on fire to make a show. So I'm gonna go do that. <laughs> 